Today we're going to do another installation of the Kraken G10, but now on the GTX 980 Strix. I'm going to go ahead and say this up front. After having this installed and running my card and doing some overclocking and tweaking, that the new Maxwell GPU architecture is so efficient that the Kraken G10 may not be as noticeable of an upgrade as previous NVIDIA GPU architectures. Having said that, we'll go ahead and get into this. If you've watched any of my other G10 installation videos, this is going to be pretty straightforward and be very similar to any of the other generations of uh, NVIDIA graphics cards. First, we just removed these four screws that hold the heat sink and cooler onto the GPU itself. These are the only four screws that actually hold the cooler onto the graphics card. Um, be careful that once you remove the cooler that you disconnect the fan from the fan header before you set the cooler aside. Next thing we need to do is clean off all the old thermal paste. And as you can see, as normal, and what's typically seen from the factory is an over-application of thermal paste. When you remove the cooler, there shouldn't be this much thermal paste still left on the GPU. To remove the first and largest amount of the thermal paste, I just take a piece of paper towel and wipe off as much of the thick goo as I can. And yes, thick goo is a technical term. Sometimes I like to take an old credit card or an old gift card to get in between uh, the little crevices around the GPU, but make sure that if you do this, you are careful not to push too hard or, or scrape too hard because all these little components around the GPU are delicate and you don't want to damage them in any way. I do get asked about the cleaning solution that I'm using. Uh, mine's actually a CRC uh, electronics cleaner. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds that you can use. Uh, make sure that you're using something that's safe for your computer components. Just using isopropyl alcohol 90% or better is a safe alternative and something that a lot of people have around the house. And a lot of people's favorite is the Arc to Clean uh, GPU and CPU cleaning kit. But whatever you use, make sure that it's okay to use on your CPU uh, or computer components and it's something that's not going to leave any kind of residue behind. If you are unsure about what you're trying to use to clean, uh, it's safest just to use isopropyl alcohol, 90% or greater, or just get the Arc to Clean kit. CRC makes a lot of different uh, component cleaning solutions, so you can be easily confused on which one is, is proper and correct to use for uh, using on computer components. So uh, the safest thing is to either use the one I have linked in the description or just to use the Arc to Clean or just normal isopropyl alcohol. The goal here is to get as much of the old thermal paste off that you can. Um, I'm a little bit meticulous, it's probably not necessary to get everything even around the GPU die itself, but um, I try to get as much of it off as I can. And if you've not yet noticed, I've switched from using paper towel to a coffee filter, and the reason for this is uh, paper towel will leave a lot of lint behind, and you don't want that being between your GPU and your cooler. The coffee filter, however, won't leave any lint Next, it's time to prepare the card and bracket, as well as the Acetec style cooler that you've selected for mounting to the graphics card. I chose to go with the Corsair H75, but I've also upgraded the fans to some Noctua NFF12 fans. Since I'm doing a custom mounting of the GPU bracket, I decided to keep the Asus DirectCU backplate which requires me to use some uh, special hardware. Again, any special hardware will be linked in the description, but all you should need are a total of eight of these white nylon washers. I also have four of these finishing washers, and then four M2.5 25 millimeter screws. And as you can see, the thumb screw that's there is the one that comes with the Kraken G10 kit. You will also notice that I do not use any of the stock fans. I prefer the Noctua NFB9 for the bracket itself and the NFF12 for my cooler. I am now holding up a GPU fan header to allow you to connect your cooling fans directly to the GPU to allow the graphics card to control the speed of your fans. The other option is to connect your fans directly to the motherboard and control their speed through the BIOS. Now to install the screws, 
All you need are one of your screws, the white nylon washer, and the finishing washer. The finishing washer rests directly on the back side of the back plate of the graphics card with the nylon washer on top of that. And a little tip for something I didn't do in the video, if you have some scotch tape, it would be a lot easier just to put a piece of scotch tape to hold the screws in instead of trying to flip the card over and hope they don't fall out. I chose the hard way, but I was able to hold them in as I flipped them over. You may not be so lucky. Once you've got the card flipped back over, uh, straighten the screws to be as perpendicular as you possibly can get them. And the next thing we're going to do is clean the heat sink plate for the water cooler. If you're using a brand new cooler, it's likely that you already have thermal paste applied, so you probably can skip this step. However, if you're reusing a cooler, then you'll want to clean this off. I've already cleaned it, but again, I'd like to make sure it's completely clean right before application. And again, I'm using cleaning solution as well as a coffee filter to do the final cleaning here. I decided to double check my orientation of the cooler heat sink with the hoses coming off the top. Depending on the way that you're mounting your radiator in your case, um, this is going to be different, but generally you're going to have the hoses coming off the top of the card. Now we'll get ready to apply the thermal paste. Again, as usual, I prefer to use the pea size method, which is also the preferred method for obtaining the best results. Do not, under any circumstances, try to spread the thermal paste. This is the least effective form of applying thermal paste of any of them and creates a lot of air pockets, which decreases cooling efficiency. Now is the trickiest part of the whole installation process. Now that we have the thermal paste applied, we try to install the bracket and cooler. And the trick is making sure that we apply even pressure to the thermal paste and make sure that once you make contact with the heat sink plate and the GPU and the thermal paste all together that you do not remove the heat sink from the GPU otherwise you are going to create air pockets in your thermal paste. What I try to do here is make sure that I hold the heat sink far enough away from the thermal plate paste that it doesn't make contact with it while I start to install the thumb screws onto the bracket. If you apply any uneven pressure, you're going to push all the thermal paste to one side of the GPU. It can be a little tricky lining up the holes on the bracket with all the screws that are fairly loose. Once you've got everything lined up, the next thing you'll need to do is take another nylon washer, place it down first before you install the thumb screw. During this part of the installation, all you want to do is put each thumb screw on maybe two or three threads just to make sure that it's not going to fall off. Once you've got all four of them on is when we are going to start to tighten them down. I started with these outer three to counterbalance the weight of the fan and the bracket. Uh, that way, once I've got these three on, I don't feel like I have to hold the bracket up anymore to create even pressure. Once you have all four thumb screws and nylon washers installed, just gently tighten down each one a few threads at a time. Eventually, you will start to get a snug feeling and you don't have to tighten these too much. Once they start to feel fairly tight, uh, you can check them with your fingers. Once they feel snug by your fingers on the thumb screws, they should be completely tight. You can get a lot more leverage with the screwdriver, so you don't want them to feel tight by the screwdriver, otherwise you may have over-tightened them. A good way to visually gauge is that the thumb screws have little rubber gaskets on them, and if they start to mash and squeeze out, then you're getting to the point where you're getting too tight. Now this ASUS model has a five pin, PWM header on the PCB. So you will then need a 5 pin to 4 pin adapter and then a 4 pin GPU fan adapter to standard 4 pin PWM fan adapter. It's important to note that 
uh, you are not going to be able to power more than two fans. And to be honest, I would only try to power one fan from the graphics card fan header. The best option is to actually get a powered fan adapter, which will allow you to connect the PWM header to a powered adapter that connects to your power supply, which you can connect to up to four fans that will be able to be controlled by the PWM header on your graphics card. And that's pretty much it. After you get to this point, it's time to install the graphics card, do your cable management and connect everything, power it on, and see that it works. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe and check out my other videos. And for more tips or ideas on how to build a gaming PC, network attached storage, or home theater PC, check out byogamingpc.com.